bio for Eddie Rispone, but I did a little research on my own. So I'm making this introduction a little longer, but I think that every bit of it is worth hearing. So here we go. Eddie Rispone was raised in a second generation immigrant family in a blue collar neighborhood in Baton Rouge. He received a Catholic education that equipped him to achieve personal and professional success. He is a co-founder and chairman of the board of ISC Construction, LLC, which specializes in electrical and instrumentation engineering and construction. Together with his brother and co-founder, Jerry, they have grown ISC into one of the largest specialty contractors in the United States with annual revenues of approximately $350 million and over 3,000 employees. ISC has an excellent reputation in the industry both in regard to performance and safety. ISC has received the prestigious Associated Builders and Contractors ABC Award for National Excellence in Construction 13 times and has also been awarded the CURT Award, which stands for Construction Industry Safety Award, um, the Workforce Development Award multiple times. He has supported LSU's College of Engineering personally, as well as through his company, as has his brother. In addition, he chaired LSU's Construction Industry Advisory Council. In 2005, he helped spearhead the Louisiana Craft Workforce Development Board, which developed comprehensive recommendations to address the shortage of craft persons in Louisiana. In 2009, he was appointed by Governor Bobby Jindal to serve as chairman of the Louisiana Workforce Investment Council, which consists of members from public and private entities to include representatives from all sectors of the Louisiana economy and state agencies working together to help Louisiana citizens meet the state's workforce needs. He stepped down as chairman of the Louisiana Workforce Investment Council to chair the Louisiana Federation of Children. He is known for his generosity and tireless efforts on behalf of the less fortunate. He believes that helping to establish ACE scholarships in Louisiana is one of the most effective acts of stewardship. In Eddie's own words, it is becoming more and more obvious that we are failing our children by not giving them an opportunity to be educated in a way that will allow them to have happy, productive lives. When we leave this world, we leave everything behind except the good that we have accomplished through stewardship. I believe donating to ACE scholarships is one of the best investments we can make for the good of God's children and for the good of society. He funded a documentary film titled The Experiment that followed five children ages nine through 12 through the 2009 to 2010 school year in New Orleans. The film includes interviews with national leaders in education as well as state and city officials. It won the best Louisiana feature at the New Orleans Film Festival in 2011. The movie changed him. When I watched the rough cuts, I was heartbroken. The children in the film are beautiful. They are capable. They are real. He has poured his heart and soul into education reform with a focus on scholarship and school vouchers. In his words, I believe in giving children a choice. In the midst of pursuing his career and his passionate philanthropy, he finds time to relax at his camp in Grand Isle with his wife, uh, Linda, their children, and I think at least 24 grandchildren. <laughs> Um, his dedication to education reform is for the long haul. I can't ever give up on the children because I feel it's my moral and spiritual obligation to save them. You don't quit your spiritual life. Your spiritual life takes you all the way to the grave. And with that, I introduce Mr. Eddie Rusponi. Can y'all hear me okay? That, uh, that kind of gets you.
always difficult to get someone to talk about. Thank you. Uh, this, can you all hear me all right or do I? That's better, huh? Put it close. Yes. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, this is a very friendly crowd. I recognize quite a few people here. Half my family's here today. <laughs> uh, I have to remind myself I'm talking to uh, conservative, predominantly ladies, and Republicans, so that's also something that's encouraging. So I can I can say what I want to say about our governor. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, you know, what I'll start with is, is as I've made the rounds, uh, people come up and say, Eddie, do you really know what you're getting into? You're not a politician. Well, I have to agree with them. I'm not a career tax and spend politician. What I am is I'm a conservative, I'm a business person, I'm sort of an outsider and I truly care about Louisiana. <laughs> what I'll tell you in, in deliberating about running is that I'm not ready to give up on Louisiana. At 70 years old, I'm ready. This is it. we got to do something. And so that's, that's where I'm coming from. It took a lot of deliberation to get there, but we, we're committed. We're not giving up. I grew up in a, in, in a faith field a uh, blue-collar family of seven siblings in North Baton Rouge. North Baton Rouge, most of the jobs there depended on industry. Back in the early 1900s, mid-1900s, that's when Standard Oil and Ethel and Allied Chemical, Barton, Kaiser, all of those came from Louisiana. I grew up there with six of us in the household and one children at one time. It didn't take long to realize that if I wanted spending money, transportation, or to go to college, I was going to have to have a job. My oldest brother, Sammy, had moved out by the time the three young ones were born. So he got me my first job at 15 years old. At 15 years old in construction. Back then, if you had a driver's license, you could work construction. At 16, I was working in Standard Oil construction. Made my way through college, got graduated in construction, with Art Bob, dear friend of mine, in the first class. Went to work, worked for 14 years, and did work all over the United States. And about 30 years ago, my youngest brother and I started the company we have today. Like you heard earlier, we've been very blessed. We founded it on integrity and treating others as we want to be treated, and we we're going to be the most sophisticated company we could do. Build. As a result of that, we've attracted a lot of, not just talented people, but quality people who want to work as a team. As you heard earlier, today we do over $350 million a year and we employ over 3,000 families. That's the way we look at it. Now why would someone like me want to run for government? Well, it starts with, we've been so blessed in our lives. We've had such opportunities in our lives. And I want all children today and in the future to reach their full potential. And I want them to do that in Louisiana. We have a governor today that would want you to believe that he's not a liberal tax and spend Democrat. In the meantime, he was a delegate for Barack Obama and also he publicly supported Hillary Clinton and her candidacy for president. While he was running, he, he said he was not going to raise taxes. He also told the Catholic bishops of Louisiana that he would not attack the scholarship program, the Louisiana scholarship program, which afforded low-income children an opportunity to escape failing schools. Well, in his first year, he went back on both promises. And that's not a... That's not, a, that's not a governor that we want to have. My wife and I, well, I guess I can tell you, my wife and I were both widowed. Today, we've been married for uh, look, about 12 and a half years. You heard earlier we have seven married children, 24 grandchildren. We have many, many opportunities to share the lives of our grandchildren and our children. And I say this all the time, and you see it now, but and Brandy. They, um, we get many opportunities to see the nutcracker. 
Y'all seen them yesterday. They start out as lambs. So you have 26 lambs up there, and you have two granddaughters up there with a face about this big. You need binoculars to figure out which one is yours. But that's where you start. Then you go to dance recitals, and you go to first communions, and graduations, and birthday parties, and everything. All those beautiful things that you share your lives with. Well, we're, it doesn't take us long to realize how blessed we are. All of our children are doing extremely well. All of our grandchildren are doing, they're healthy, doing well. They're all going to Christian schools in this area, predominantly Catholic schools. But the issue is, is that while I'm sitting there enjoying this, and so grateful to God for how he has blessed me, he taps me on the shoulder and he says, hey, Eddie, what about the over 130,000 children in DNF schools? What about their future? What are you going to do about them? And I'll go back and say what the governor did. He had told the Catholic Bishop he wouldn't attack the program. His first session, he tried to cut $4 million out of the Louisiana Scholarship Program. These mothers were so upset that several of them went on TV in New Orleans and Baton Rouge and said, Governor, you went back on your word. One went as far as to say you lied. That's not a governor that's going to put the children first. That's not. Also, a little over a year ago, he came out with an executive order completely throwing the industrial tax exemption program into chaos. It's called ITEP. Chaos. The Jobs were delayed, expansions were delayed. We had, we lost like 400 jobs in just our small, our company in a matter of two, two months. It was amazing. The irony of it is that he had met with the president of one of the largest industrial organizations, the Louisiana Chemical Association, the day before and never mentioned it to Greg Bowser. Never mentioned it to him. Not to work things out, not to tell them what I think we need to do. Didn't mention it. That's a governor who does not appreciate job creators, and he takes it for granted. And it's a good analogy. It's like eating the goose that lays the golden eggs. It doesn't work. John Kennedy would love that. <laughs> so, what am I what am I planning to do? Well, first of all, we are going to go out. And we're going to recruit the best talent we can find to head up these agencies. We're not going to put people in agencies. Simply from a political standpoint, they helped you get elected and you fit the mode. We're going to get the talented people. These are huge agencies. We need people that can get in there and figure it out, work with me to do it right, and make sure that we, we find the talent in these agencies and they're effective and they're efficient. Second. The second thing is that we have the Louisiana checkbook. We're going to make sure that it's installed and operational as planned. You cannot operate a business, you can't operate the state if you don't know where you're spending the money. And the third thing is that we're going to work with the legislature. For the last 25 plus years, I've put plenty of effort and resources in electing good conservative legislators that want to make our state successful. I've never asked anything up from them other than do what's right for all the citizens. I know how to work with the leadership. I'm going to work with the leadership. Many of them have certain talents and certain passions. Where the governor fits in, the governor has to recognize that and work with them and support them. We're going to need to do that in order to make some changes in the laws and also in the Constitution. So we will have a solid foundation in our state to move forward. If you agree with all this, what I'm asked you to do is get involved. Support is aforgovernor.com. You can go on board. You can make a contribution. You can volunteer. The women, pardon the men, but the women in this state particularly the Republican women in this state, are going to elect the next governor. Yes. 
ask you to do that. The other thing I'm going to ask you to do is that I want you to keep Linda and our daughters and our grandchildren in your prayers. This is a lot to ask of you. Time-wise, sharing the dad, sharing the husband, sharing the grandfather, all those, that's, that's a sacrifice on their part because they want me to be with there and I want to be with them as well. But the other thing that they're going to hear some things about Papa and Daddy that are not going to be true. And I'm not concerned about that because they know who I am and my friends know who I am. But it's still something to challenge to their grandchildren, particularly the chick, the teenagers. So just keep them in your prayers as well. I'm fine. I have thick skin. Been in business for 40 something years, so I know what to do there. The other thing is that we do have a sign up sheet if you want to help and volunteer, please do that. Thank y'all for inviting me. This is an awesome turnout. This is actually the biggest turnout we've had. Uh, I don't want to say it's me, I think it's your organization. Uh, <laughs> Questions? Are we done? Sure. Okay. Hey, uh, you making changes in the Constitution? Would you support or, or, or try to do a constitutional convention? How would you make it? That's a good question. The question is, uh, would I support a some type of constitutional convention? Right now, I would say we're, we're thinking about a limited constitutional convention to address four articles: education, uh, tax, and re uh, revenue, and uh, Taxation, I guess you call it revenues, and then you'd have uh, education revenues. You would have uh, local government, and the other one would be elected officials and government employees. So that's kind of the four areas that we're talking about. Uh, I'm visiting with some legislators uh, over the last year and now, and we go forward whether we have the constitution to amend those or not. And I would say it probably depends on how well we do electing other conservatives. We have term limits, so please get engaged there because if we get a, a majority, a super majority in the House and a majority in the Senate, then we can really get some things done to get us on sound footing. I hope I answered your question. Yes, we don't, that's what I mentioned earlier, legislation and some amendments that we have to work on. And how we do it. It's really, I don't want to belabor it. I'd love to talk to you more about it after this. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I mentioned this to you earlier, but uh, many of us worked against uh, Together Baton Rouge since its formation. And we recently read that you have formed, uh, you've seen the light, and you formed um, uh, it's a Catholic family account. What was the They are families first, right? That's been over a year and a half ago. Yeah, right. Huh? So um, what would you propose to do if you became governor? Would you make it um, make the public aware of this? Yesterday we got I got an email of all the churches in the Baton Rouge area who are involved and contribute to together Baton Rouge. There were like 30 churches, and in some you wouldn't believe the churches that are involved who are just ignorant of what they're about. Well, let me uh, let me comment. I don't know where to start on that, but uh, first of all. Uh, the Be Our Families First, we actually produced a video and showed who really, who they really are, together Baton Rouge and, and, a, and a socialist group is what it amounts to, so all the rest of you What I will tell you is that I won't be a governor that makes a decision based on what Louisiana together Baton Rouge convinced him to do, and that's to change the idea completely. The industry, the job creators, he didn't talk to the sheriffs, he didn't talk to the parish presidents, the school board, he just threw it out there. And a year later, he's asking for help to fix it. So, as far as I'm concerned, Louisiana together is not with me, obviously. Go to go to your families first and see that. But uh, behind you, there, Matt. Go ahead. Hey, hey, right. Let's follow up with you on ISEP. You know, I, I can tell you that at the council level, the environment that we have. Uh, since having it sent down to us, and we all saw it this week uh, with everything that happened with Exxon. It's just a, it's a toxic environment. It's not going to be sustainable if that environment continues. So, um, what I'd like to hear from you is, is 
your kind of the specifics of what you change about the executive order, and, and you know, what's the biggest change of how you'd like to see ITAC addressed? Let me say this, and, I, and this is the big picture. The big picture is that I will be a governor that for the last 45 years, I have worked with industry, job creators, and worked with them, and I have worked in the education side to fill those jobs with Louisiana citizens. That's what you need. So the answer to your question is that the job creators have to know that they have a governor that appreciates them and wants to work with them. Not do what he did, just go out and listen to the socialists and change it up. So that's 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 about as simple as it gets. You know, I've met with people all over the state, whether in oil and gas and agriculture, it doesn't matter. All service, you know, manufacturing, shipbuilding, all of them. They just want a governor that appreciates what they do and willing to listen to what it takes to create jobs. And I have a relationship with other governors around us in the country that are business people who ran for the first time, and it's remarkable what they have accomplished by knowing it and understanding it. When you sit down with other business people been doing it for 45 years, you can relate to them, they, they, and they understand you, and you understand them, and then they're going to be working with you to create those jobs. And I hope I answered your question. But, and it's got some legal things we have to work on, some legislation we have to work on, but the fact that they have a governor that's willing to work with them and understands how to create jobs is the biggest thing. Yes, Matt? So, uh, just, just to go on what Councilman Hudson just said, when this current governor, and I'm sure you all know about this, pushed down the decision making on industrial tax exemption in the municipalities, a little bit of it was, I'm going to reward you for some control, but really it was a whole lot of shirking responsibility of giving away any kind of tax money. And in the long run, when you give all of this control to the individual municipalities, Louisiana's not fighting with Mississippi and Texas anymore. We're fighting with West Baton Rouge, we're fighting with Ascension, and now we're all undercutting each other or giving, giving away the farm as it is together back, who likes to say, to bring stuff in. How would you change how the ITEP program would work so that, like this current governor has pitted the parishes against one another, how would you allow us all to work together to make a better state for all of us? Right. Well, getting into more specifics there, again, is, is what I've done for 45 years. You get the participants in the room and you sit down and you discuss it and you make sure that you have a plan that will work before you roll it out. Simple, it's not that complicated. If he would have said we need to do something different, he was sincere about it and not just trying to make a show and tease the, the, together Louisiana, he would have called in the parish presidents and the school board people and the industry people have said, you know, we need to work on something. We don't want St. James fighting against Ascension and all these things. But he, he's, he's a career politician, guys, I'm sorry. Third generation at that. They don't think like we do. It's all about, you know, how can I get more votes and how can I appease more people? I, I don't know how many times I can say it, but yes. Can you distinguish yourself and between your, your opponent, um, Dr. Abramson, and share with us uh, how you might be better suited as a governor. That's good. That, that, was, a, that was a plan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, let, let me say this. Dr. Abraham is obviously, he and I are going to have similar policies because he's a Republican and he knows that's where he has to run for sure. And he's obviously a very smart man uh, as well, a doctor. But I would say the, the approach that I have to take, I'm not going to ever criticize his character or anything else in his intelligence and his wants. But it's pretty simple to me. You take two resumes and you put them next to each other. And I'll use a bad example, but it's, a, it's pretty practical. Which hospital system in Louisiana that you know is run by a doctor any longer? That happened in over 25, 30 years. Okay? This is a $30 billion operation that we have. We have a doctor that's over, so I'm not criticizing it. I don't want to change your appendix out, take it out either. But I have to say, we're going to look at the resume. You have a person over here that has worked with industry all over the country, all over Louisiana, understands what it takes to create jobs, work in the education side of it, 
to fill those jobs with Louisiana citizens, has helped elect conservative legislators for over 25 years, knows how that works, knows the relationship, knows what's important in Louisiana, all over Louisiana, for that matter, a lot around the country. So I just, all I can say is look at the resume and say who you want overseeing a $30 billion budget, working with the Louisiana legislation, legislators, and knows what needs to be done. That's, that's really how it is. Yes, John, I'm sorry. You, have, you, uh, have, have you taken a position yet on Medicaid expansion? Uh, as you know, I mean, it's a short-term or a fix uh, for the long-term let me, I'll be finished, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, the Medicaid expansion, I, you know, I don't know all the details about it, and I'm looking into it, but what I do know is that originally in 1965, I think it was, it was, it came along to help people, elderly that could no longer work, and handicapped and couldn't work. And we just keep expanding it for all kinds of, wrong reasons in that respect. But I do know this as a government, I would have somebody over that agency and I wouldn't just roll it out without being prepared to do it properly. Whether they will all need to have the Medica Medicaid or not. When we find out from an auditor that we spent somewhere between 85 and $135 million on people who didn't qualify, that sends you a message that you, you're not doing a very good job of picking your secretaries, you're not you're pushing them, you're not watching it and making sure it's done right. That's 135 now and stands another artist that maybe another hundred million dollars. That's hundred million dollars. A thousand. Twice. So we might have two hundred million dollars wasted. But we're gonna look at it and see. Well the scary part is that as the feds come down with their their matching funds, that's gonna fall on the state. So if you don't even if it's all legit, you might have a serious problem down the road. Yes? We, we have time for just two more questions. All right, I'll try not to get too long an answer. <laughs> yes? <laughs> yes, you can, you can actually go to the website, editingforgovernor.com, and so we're putting information up on that now. And then uh, we just got the, some signs in, printing material and stuff like that. So that's coming. Thank you for asking. Yes. You're the last one. You better be good. <laughs> yes. I can work good. Actually, I, there's a handful of us that supported uh, President Trump in a very large way when he was a candidate. We had a lot of them they want to support Matthew's president. But uh, we, we flew to New York and uh, met with him, had lunch with him, and contributed his campaign. His policies and my policies are right on track. His tenacity to get things done and cut through that, right on track. His ability to discern who is good and who's not good and who's trying to control the world. He and I, you know, of course, I'm not strong. But I have business skills that, that you can after 45 years of doing that. So I would say this, so I probably have a little different style. In <laughs> 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 some humor, uh, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to marry well, too. <laughs> Thank you all. Appreciate you. This is